Mike, let's start with your material choices. And are there any cost-effective options? Hi, Tracy. Well, roofing is a very wide-ranging topic. Um, there's lots to cover today, and there are budget-friendly options. So let's start with the most cost-effective options, and those are asphalt shingles. And there's basically three types of asphalt shingles. There's three-tab, architectural, and premium or luxury shingles, each with their own diverse characteristics. The most cost-effective are three-tab. They lay flat on the roof. There's limited color options. They're coming in around $9 a square foot, but they only have about a 15-year lifespan with proper maintenance. Now, architectural shingles, which are around me here, are the most popular. Uh, they're more durable because they're thicker. They come in multiple layers. Um, you can get them to mimic slate and cedar, um, and they have about a 25-year lifespan, so usually longer than most people are in their home. Now, uh, a premium or luxury shingle is the most durable. It, it can last up to 30 years. It, it is the thickest. It is also the heaviest. So with a heavy shingle, you can have issues with existing roofs if you're upgrading the existing shingle. So making sure the roof can support that weight is very important. Now, generally speaking, the thicker a shingle is, the more durable it is. Um, but you have to remember that Asphalt shingles on a roof will increase the heat in the attic space. So addressing proper ventilation at the time of installation is the time to do it, to make sure that, you know, is done properly. Now, the real driver of cost on any roofing project is the labor. And it directly correlates to the complexity of the roof. How steep is it? What's the access light? How many flashings there are? Um, you know, whereas a simple rancher with a basic gabled roof with lots of access is much more cost effective to install that roof than, say, a roof with a very steep pitch where I am that has limited access and has many valleys and complicated angles on the roof. It is very important that you remove all these old shingles before applying a new shingle. Never go on top and uh, make sure that all new flashings are used and that ice and water shield which is typically on the eaves of a house that you use across the entire field uh, where the shingles are being laid. Okay good tip because a lot of folks will say they're just going to put a layer over what you have. You're saying remove them all and go fresh if you're getting your roof done. Let's talk a little bit about other options steel or slate. Can you walk through those other options for us? Sure. Uh, steel is an amazing product. It can last over 50 years. It performs really well in ice and snow. Um, now, there's different qualities of steel out there and different methodologies of installing it. There are pre-manufactured panels that lock together and are face fastened. They're the most cost effective. All the way to custom standing seam roofs with uh, specialty colors and they're basically fabricated or bent on site and, and made to custom fit uh, on roofs and can be designed architecturally, etc. Now, the thickness or gauge of the steel um, will dictate or, or contribute towards the cost of the roof. And obviously, the thicker the steel, the more money. Um, you asked about slate. Now, slate, I love slate personally. Um, it's beautiful, it's a natural product. It is can last over 100 years. The challenging part about slate is it's very, very heavy. So again, you have to make sure that that existing roof structure can support it. Now, you have to remember, though, that slate is upwards of 40 to $50 per square foot. That's four or five times the cost of a basic three-tab shingle. There's also cedar as well. Um, it's a very lightweight option. It's aesthetically pleasing, um, in, given the certain you know, structure and design of the house, but can come with a lot of maintenance, but cedar again is only around 1525 per square foot, so a lot less than slate or metal, um, but a lot of maintenance comes with that. Yeah, and someone's got to go up there and do that maintenance with the cedar. I love the mm -hmm. look of it. There's folks in my neighborhood <laughs> with that, but I'm, all I'm thinking is, well, who's trying to maintain that? So let's talk a little bit about maintenance in general uh, when it comes to your roof. What do we need to know? Well. It's important to make sure that the roof is inspected a couple times a year, in the spring and in the fall. Uh, making sure that east troughs remain clear, that debris, leaves, branches, these kinds of things are removed off the actual structure itself. 
and that um, you know some roofs, depending if they're facing north or the climate or the amount of moisture in the area that you live, that you remove that moss and algae buildup on the roof as well. Zinc strips can also help with something like that if you're in an area where that's an issue. Now, there's also the timing to consider in roofing in general, Tracy. Now, typically roofs happen, installations from you know, spring to, to fall, uh, except on those really hot days in the summer. That's when you don't want to be roofing. Now, uh, you also don't want to roof in freezing temperatures because shingles can actually, asphalt shingles can break. They're brittle when they're that cold. Um, so you also want to avoid walking your roof and doing any service when it is that cold as well. Um, and all these shingles have an adhesive strip on the back and it helps them all stick together. And a day like this when the sun is out and you're roofing, it helps it all bind. So if you're doing it in really cold weather, it doesn't bind. And then say you have a windstorm two days later, your brand new roof could have shingles missing all over the place. So you don't want to do your roof when it's cold. So going back to the maintenance, you have to make sure you do it uh, when the weather cooperates. Mike, thank you so much. Please be safe getting down from there. Uh, really great information.